today I'm going to show you how to wire up the electrics for a point motor and the first thing you need to do is you need to tint your connecting cables which you're going to use on it so I've tinned a black now I'm going to tin the red let's get some solder iron out God, that's hot and make sure you're in a well vented room we've got the window wide open and we've got air coming in because these fumes are toxic you have a blinding headache at the end of the day if you don't so there you go, you've got red and black so we're going to open the bathroom window as well so there you have it here we've got a point motor and what you need to do is attach two capacitors but first of all you need to tin each wire of the point motor so you just dip them in the flux and away we go That tinned, that tinned. So, it, what it does is it makes them easier to connect to the capacitor. For some reason, it won't go on there. Put some more flux on it, which I don't understand why it should do. No problem. There you go. So, we've tinned those. Right now, we need capacitors, please. No, we need to put the. Uh... Oh, yeah, sorry. Like I've got some here to help me. Now you need to put your uh, sheath on each end of the wires. Remember you're only doing the black and the red, you're not doing the green. Now what you need to do is attach capacitors with the grey part facing away from the point mode. So do you want to put it in the uh, flux? and hold it horizontal please and do not move it and I will show them how to connect so basically that's simple as I say you make sure that's it now what you do is you put the sheaths over and you heat shrink them on make sure they're on good and tight which I can see that well, they're not quite all the way around and that's cool so we've done that now what we need to do is we need to add a red and a black wire which we've got to the end so we can test the point and it's easy to connect so what you do is you dip one end of the capacitor into the and if you can just hold it there and hold it horizontally please hold it keep it still don't you keep moving it lovely keep it still don't worry about what I'm doing I don't think I've got enough solder there so we put a bit more on and there we go Now we do one more black part. I think we've got loads of solder on that. That's beautiful that joint there. And that's that done. And now you need a black and a red sheath. go on to there there you go and you 
cover it up. And then have we got that on there? There we go. I'm going to cover the whole of the capacitor with that one. And there we go, that's in position. And that's it. So you're all done, it's all on, and it's good to go. But I think what I am going to do, I'm going to put one more red over the top here, so there's no shorting out. When the wires, when it's against other wires inside conduit, so I'll just there we go. So everything is nice and sealed, nice and insulated, and you can see that's good to go. Now, as you know, I use Gauge Master stuff. Was it PC one? PCU one to do my points, and I've wired it up. And Susan will now demonstrate. And you can hear it's got a good hard throw. And that's basically it as far as the electrics are concerned for doing the, uh, the electric points. We're now ready to mount it. Now when you're mounting a point motor, you need to make sure, this is the hardest one, that everything is out the way. Now I could put it that side. But the problem is it's too close to other parts of the track. If I put it here, it's going to affect the siding. So I've chosen to put it here. And what you do is you make sure that it's sitting and everything moves freely. So you get it in a position where, you, where you're pretty sure that everything is moving as it should, basically. It doesn't have to be dead level, the point motor, but everything has to work. So, if I can... so what you do is you screw one in, get it going. And you get it where you think it should be. That looks about right to me. So we'll put one screw in. But the important thing is, is to make sure You don't rush it, and that to me, let's have a look. It's working fine at the moment, that just doesn't quite, I don't think it's quite sitting right, but we'll find out in a minute. Let's put it in a bit tight, I think it needs to be lower down. So we put some other screws in. But the important thing is not to be afraid to move things around. It's not something that happens overnight, sadly. Point to mention is if you're doing turning points, make sure the point motor is angled away from the turning. Otherwise your coaches will catch it. A straight track like this it's not quite so important. And that at the moment to me looks pretty good. Now if you look here I've got it wired up but it's not moving the point so obviously it's not down enough on it's coming off the top it's not low enough on the hub you might not be able to see it but it's not low enough on it so I've got to readjust it, so here we go, we'll give it a go. Now what I've had to do is, I've had to dig out. It's always harder putting an electric point where there's been normal track because you've got cork, you've got blah 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 everywhere. So what I've done is had to dig out with the screwdriver over here. Loads of uh, cork and debris to get it lower. And uh, you can see now, that works absolutely fine. Coaches aren't going to catch it because it's on a straight and you can see that is lovely. Exactly how an electric point should work. So as I say, with a bit of time and effort, now all I've got to do now is just drill a small hole here 
which really isn't exciting to watch. You just feed the wires down and we'll hide them with ballast etc when it's done. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So as I say, what you need to do is, you need to drill a hole. Put the bundle going. And there you go. You can see that's in there nice. And what you do is, you make sure the wires are not tangled. And you feed it underneath and you have an assistant who you hope is going to pull the wire down. There you go. You gently pull it underneath like this. And the next one. Straight down through the middle. Careful not to chaff the uh, wires. And the last one, and I've got them tangled up, which I said not to do. Just get this out, let's pull this through here, that's it. And the next one is the green one. Okay. Got it. And you pull them down, and there you go. There's your point motor, all done, all fixed up. And you hide the wires with ballast, or you can paint them. But you can see, and there you can see the point motor all wired up, all done. And we'll paint it with weathering and we'll put some ballast over here and you won't even see the wires. And that's it, that's perfect and you've seen it works absolutely fine. So we're pretty cool with that, pretty pleased. Now what I was saying on a curve point is make sure that it's back away from the curve because if you have it round perpendicular what you're going to get is you're going to get coaches catch it and you'll see that it works absolutely fine like that, no problem, easy peasy, but make sure it goes round a bit because what will happen is if you put it here, the coach is coming around will catch it. It could have gone the other side is another way around of doing it, but even then you risk the doors or steps just catching it. And you can see there's no problem with the way that works. And that's the way you've got to do it if you're on a curve point and it's going around a curve. Right, we're going to fit another point, and this is another troublesome one because it comes onto track. And I thought about using the base plate, but that's no good at all. So I can see there it's pretty cool. It's nice and it's in there pretty good, but you can see it's going to rock up and down. So I'm going to use washers. So what I do is I put some screws. Can you still see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Put some. Can you see here what I'm doing? Yes. You put your screws into. Start the screws into the uh, point motor. So you start winding them in. Well, not not that much. And you start. Let's take it off. And I wind another one in because I know. I'm going to use my famous little washers. To pack it. And bear in mind, you're not going to see this once it's all ballasted. So a lot of this, it doesn't have to be all that's wonderful because it's going to be hidden. And these are, I'm showing you that, that the worst, the worst to do as far as point motors are concerned. Electric screwdrivers run out of battery, that's why I'm doing this. So here you go like this. And I'm going to have to use some washers to pack it out to make sure it's solid against the, the bottom. And that's about so. Put some body washers in. As long as it's perpendicular to the track, and it sits nice and solid, that's all that matters. Can I have another washer, please? I'm going to need three each side. Maybe. Cheers, thanks. Now what you can do if you've got trouble moving them around and they drop off everywhere is use some UPVA glue and just glue, glue them together. Hopefully I won't have that problem. So we put this on the right place and we'll put it down and we'll see how it looks. 
anatomy looks pretty damn good it's straight it's not bashing against anything and it looks like it's quite lined up with everything so let's put let's wind the screws in see how it looks but as I said don't be afraid to take things out and do them again it's not a one shot pony and that to me looks pretty good but always where you're going on to old track or, or or you've got two boards meeting which you have here which isn't ideal you're going to get the odd difference in height and how it looks but the most important thing is that they work and as I said it's on a straight so it's not going to catch anything if you're on a bend be careful run your coaches along it because you don't want a situation like I've had where I've gleefully put point motors in and found that everything that goes around catches them and I've ballasted it and I've weathered it and I find that hey how I've got to do it all again and you can see the body washes are pretty cool I hold it there now the reason I use people might wonder well, why is he using point motors that stick up at the top and I'll tell you why if anything goes wrong I do not want to spend hours paddling under a board basically I'm too big and I just do not want to paddle and I like to see things work and uh, that's it that's pretty cool so now we're going to wire up the uh, the points controller the PC you want and see if it works right here we are testing the handiwork it's good and solid and you can see that is spot on look at that the only thing I will say is I think I need another washer I can see them rattling there under there I need another washer under there which is easy to do which but you can see that's perfect absolutely spot on thank you Right, what we've had to do is I've had to gouge out because his leg supports everywhere. I've had to gouge out along here for the wires to go because obviously I'm not going to drill through the metal parts that are holding the uh, table. So what will happen is, is you won't be able to see now, but when that's actually down under ballast, a bit of ballast and painted grey, you won't see the wires. It's just an unfortunate hazard of where it is that I've had to do that. And also, you wouldn't be able to use an under table point motor anyway there because there's just no room for it. But these wires, they will be fine. You won't even see them because all I'll do is we'll paint them grey, just here, and we'll UPVA them down and then we'll put a bit of ballast on top and some greenery like you have in the middle of tracks. But that's that one done. We're cool. Thank you.